You ever wonder what goes on at the closing table of a real estate transaction? Let's go to a title company and find out. Hey everyone, I'm Roger Phillips, Roger the Realtor, and I appreciate you stopping by my channel. I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about the what seems like a confusing topic of uh, the closing process. You found the home, you found the money, now it's time to wrap it all up, sign a thousand papers. So if you're not in this business or you don't buy and sell houses every day, you probably have some questions. Well, let's go talk to a good friend of mine, Mary. She's a local escrow agent, been doing this a long time, top of her game. So let's go talk to her and find out what really goes on on closing day. But I'd like to just test your knowledge because I know you're a veteran in this business. So if I say to you, legal description, what does that mean? Is that the address of the house? The legal description is the actual lot and block, or it could be meets and bounds if it's acreage. So if it's in a subdivision, it's usually lot and block. Okay. And rural property is meets, meets and bounds, and bounds yes. where they tell you how long the sides are and the corners right. of the property and all that but stuff. there are some uh, properties like in downtown Rockwall that are meets and bounds just because they're that old they're old that, that property is old correct okay I should start by that definition I should start describing myself in meets and bounds instead of 510 and 200 pounds right I would be meets and bounds correct because I'm old because you're old thank you Quite often I hear the words quit claim deed, Q-U-I-T claim, quit claim deed. And when I was in real estate school a long time ago, they said anyone could get a quit claim deed to anything. It doesn't prove that they own it. What comes to your mind when I say quit claim deed? We do not recognize those. Okay. But there is such a anybody, thing, right? But it's yes, not a... Yes. Anybody can go and file anything they want to. Okay. And that's one reason you need a title search done mm -hmm. on the property before you close and get title insurance mm -hmm. to see if there's anything filed. Okay. Because it might be in somebody's name that doesn't even have anything to do with this property. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe an heir that wasn't named in Correct. a will or maybe a spouse that kind of wasn't mentioned at all. Correct. A past spouse or something like that. But anybody can file anything right. as long as it's notarized. Right. When I buy a car, I get a title. When I pay off the lien on the car to my lender, I get a clear title to that car. So on a house or land pro property, what document, what do I have as the owner in my hand that says I own this, with or without liens? What, what, what instrument does that? It would be the warranty deed Okay. that's recorded at the county clerk's office. Okay. You don't have to have the original. We always send the original back to the buyer, but you don't have to have the original. It's recorded at the county clerk's office. You can go there and get a copy of it anytime. Okay. And that's the the mother of all documents that says you bought it. You own this house. Correct. With or without the liens. Correct. Okay. Whenever you get a loan, the lender prepares a deed of trust and that establishes the lien against the property. Oh, okay. It's also recorded at the county clerk's office. It will stay on that property until that lender releases it. That's the deed of trust. Okay. Quite often when I'm showing property, people may ask me, can I, can I run a daycare or can I have a home-based business or can I drive my company truck and park it in the street in front of my house at night? And I try to explain, you can unless there are rules someplace and sometimes that may be deed restrictions. What are deed restrictions? Those are always referenced in Schedule B on your title commitment under, it says restrictions. Okay. But now there's a lot of HOAs, homeowners associations, they could have separate restrictions against the property, but they should be recorded. So anything like that would be referenced under Schedule B. And if a buyer sees something in deed restrictions or HOA restrictions that they don't like, that they don't want to comply with, that title insurance policy that you're going to sell them does not allow them to break those rules, right? They no. can't. Those restrictions, we send the buyer copies, mm -hmm. but it's up to them to read them and, right. and understand them. Right. And seek counsel. We always recommend everyone Correct. seek legal counsel. If you're not sure, then go find out. Yes. Okay. What does a title company do? What is your main role? We guarantee free and clear title to the property. What are the first few steps that happen when a contract comes to your office? 
The first thing we do is we re will receive the earnest money. Then we turn the order in to what we call our plant to do the full title examination of the property. We'll send it out to all parties with a letter telling you what we need to cure on mm -hmm. title. There are four parts of a title commitment. Okay. Schedule A, who is in title. Okay. The legal description of the property, the proposed borrower, the proposed lender, and the sales price and the loan amount. Okay, excellent. Schedule B mm -hmm. goes over the property, like any easements against the property, your restrictions, your boundaries, so anything I, to do with the property. If this buyer wanted to open a daycare, in those restrictions they found out that couldn't happen, that's where they would learn that. Right. Okay. And then, of course, they could terminate the contract. Right. Schedule C is what I look for. It lists any problems with the property, such as outstanding liens, abstracts of judgment, the home mortgage. federal tax liens. Yeah, a home mortgage, an existing home mortgage mm -hmm. would be an outstanding lien. Okay. And we would know by this Schedule C that I need to obtain a payoff. Okay. In order to clear that. Okay. We cannot close until Schedule C is cleared. Okay. So if a contractor somewhere in the past had not been paid for work, let's say, and went to the courthouse and, and recorded a mechanic's lien, you would find it at that point and it has to be cured. Correct. Okay. We would have to get a payoff at closing. Yeah. So the buyer doesn't assume any of the seller's debts. Correct. Okay. Schedule D of the title commitment mm -hmm. just tells you who owns our title company. Mm -hmm. It gives you the underwriter, anyone that we're gonna pay on this transaction. It also will give you an estimate of what the premium is going to be for your owner's title policy and your mortgagee's policy with any endorsements. Okay, so there's no, no surprises after Correct. that, then you've been full disclosure. Correct. Okay, excellent. Okay, once we prepare the title commitment and it's sent out to all parties, um, it's also sent to the lender. After the loan has been approved, the lender will send me a closing disclosure. Once we balance with each other, then they disclose to the buyer. Um, that tells them all their fees, breaks them all out for them. Um, once that's approved, then the lender will release documents to me for closing. At that time, that's when we schedule closing. Okay. Once we close, it's not a done deal until we receive the lender's money, the buyer's money, and funding authorization from the lender, at which time we will release all the funds, uh, pay off all the liens, then the agent will release keys to the buyer. Um, we record documents with the county clerk's office of the warranty deed and deed of trust, and then at that time, uh, we would send it to our policy department to issue the policies, which usually takes about four to six weeks. Somebody brings money, somebody brings keys, somebody sleeps right. in a new house tonight. Correct. So what is title insurance and why does a buyer need that? A title insurance policy guarantees you and the lender, because there's two separate policies, there's an owner's and a lender's policy. It guarantees you free and clear title to that property. Um, it's a one-time fee. It stays with the property as long as you own that property. So it's like a lifetime protection Correct. bought one time. Correct. Unless you refinance, then the new lender would require a new mortgagee's policy, but you would not have to purchase a new owner's policy. Okay. Does a cash buyer have to have a title policy if they don't want one? Is there anything requiring it? Okay. It's negotiable in the contract. They don't mm -hmm. have to have it. Okay. But should something ever come up, a lien against the property years from now, or somebody comes and claims title to the property, they have no protection. They should have deep pockets if they want to self-insure their right. title, right? Right. Okay. I mean, for a one-time fee, and it's not that much, mm -hmm. um, it's very well worth it. Yeah, I agree. Well, thank you, Mary. You're welcome, Roger. There you go. As I suspected, Mary hit it out of the park again. Never disappoints. If you found this content helpful, our channel helpful, we really would appreciate it if you would consider hitting the subscribe button, hit the little bell. You'll be notified when we drop a new uh, video. My team and I try to do that uh, at least once a week. If you like what we're doing here, we'll go research it, shoot a little video, get it out there for you. 
Now, if you've watched any of our other videos, you know that we did one on financing, what to do when you want to buy a home. And maybe you've never borrowed money before, gotten a mortgage. So somewhere up here, over here, down here, there's a link to that video where we talk to uh, Dennis Gary at Integrity Mortgage and he breaks down for us what, what all's involved in getting a loan. So if you'd like to know more about that, click on that link. If you didn't quite get everything out of this video, come on back. We're always here for you. So as always, I'm Roger Phillips with Keller Williams.